When most people think of neural networks, usually one of the following comes to mind. A. They are artificial imitations of a human brain. B. That they are unreasonably effective. And C. That you need a lot of complicated math to understand them. While we can debate A and B, the last statement really doesn't have to be the case. In fact, I think that neural networks can be explained using just common sense. But for now, let's forget about the network and consider just a single neuron. Formally, it is a unit that takes information through its inputs, processes it, and sends the result to its single output. But perhaps an easy way to think about it is like an election, but not the democratic one. Instead, the election inside a neuron is notoriously unfair and biased. And this unfairness is precisely what makes the network so effective. To see why, Let's have a look at an example. Imagine that we wanted to predict if a soccer player would score a goal. For simplicity, assume it's a penalty kick, so it's just between the kicker and the goalkeeper. Say we know the following facts about the kicker. Their accuracy, that is, how often they hit the target, and power, which is the maximum speed of the ball they achieve. The goalkeeper's skill is measured as the percentage of kicks that they manage to stop. Based on this information, we want to output a single number representing the probability that the kicker would score a goal. By the way, instead of the 0 to 100% scale for probability, the convention is to use the 0 to 1 scale, where 1 means that the kicker always scores, and 0 means that they never do. Now, say the kicker has an accuracy of 0.8. This means that they hit the target 80% of the time. Let's also assume that the power is 30 meters per second, or equivalently 98 feet per second. And the goalkeeper skill is 0.7. Again, this means that the goalkeeper stops the ball 70% of the time on average. When we send these inputs to our neuron, it should process them, and output the probability of a goal. Remember that I promised two things. A. That a neuron can be seen as an election, and B. That it is rigged. A. Follows from the fact that each input makes a contribution to the final result. You can say that each input gets to vote. But we can't treat each input equally. For example, it could be that accuracy is more important than power. And the skill of the goalkeeper has even a negative effect. So instead, we scale each input by a number, which you can think of as its relative importance. This is why the election inside of a neuron is unfair. Inputs don't get equal voting rights. The scaling factors are usually called weights. Up until this point, we treated our neuron as a black box. But now it's time to discuss how it works under the hood. Recall that it has just one output, which means that our products have to be combined into a single number. To make the vote of every input count, we need to add each product together. This is called a weighted sum. But if you look carefully, you might notice a problem. Recall that in our soccer example, we interpreted the output as the probability of a goal, which means that it has to be between 0 and 1. But the weighted sum we just wrote might give us a number well outside of that range. To see why, let's assign example values to the weights. Obviously, this number does not represent the probability. Luckily, there is an easy fix. We can use the so-called logistic function, also known as the sigmoid. It looks like an infinitely stretched letter S, and its output is always between 0 and 1. If we pass the output of the neuron through this function, it will be squashed into the 0-1 interval, turning it into a probability. In general, a function that is applied to the weighted sum inside a neuron is called an activation function. At this point, I feel obligated to mention that in practice, sigmoid is far from being the only activation function used. There is a whole range of possible choices. But for our explanation, the sigmoid is more than enough. So, let's summarize the model of a neuron that we have so far. First, we get the inputs, which are just a collection of numbers. For example, in our soccer modeling, 
x1 represented accuracy, x2 power, and x3 the goalkeeper skill. Then the input numbers are multiplied with corresponding weights and added together. Finally, the output of the neuron is obtained by applying the logistic function to the resulting weighted sum. Following our election analogy, the voting power of each input is controlled by the corresponding weight. We now have an almost complete picture of a neuron, but there is one crucial piece missing. By now, you would probably agree that neurons aren't exactly known for tweeting their inputs fairly. Yet, it gets even worse. Neurons are biased. Once they have aggregated all of their weighted inputs, they add a number to the result before passing it to the sigmoid. This number is actually called bias. And it is necessary. To see the importance of the bias, let's see what would happen if we were to remove it. Imagine an extreme case of a kicker who always fails to kick the ball. In this case, accuracy and power are both zero. Now let the kicker be opposed by a goalkeeper with no skill whatsoever. Since the ball is never even kicked, we don't expect the goal to occur, irrespective of the skill of the goalkeeper. But let's see what would happen if we plug these numbers into our formula. The weighted sum would be zero, regardless of what weights we use. If we once again look at the graph of the logistic function, we'll see that when its input is zero, the function will output 0 0.5. In other words, our neuron predicts that a player who never even kicks the ball has a 50-50 chance of scoring the goal, which is simply absurd. As we can see, without the bias, our model doesn't make any sense. Let's see if adding it back would fix it. For this example, we want the output of the neuron to be as close to zero as possible. This means that b should be negative. For instance, if we chose b equals negative 2, then the output would be 0 0.018, which translates to less than 2% probability of scoring, which is a much better prediction than the 50% chance that we get without the bias. Collectively, weights and biases are called parameters of a neural network. They control the output of the neuron. If we know their correct values, then we can start making predictions. All we need to do is plug numbers into the inputs. But in practice, parameters are not given. Instead, they have to be learned from the data. The process of learning them is called training a neural network. Given historical soccer data, we can find parameter values that make best predictions of whether the goal would happen. In a nutshell, this is what the process of training looks like. We break the data into separate training examples, where for each example we have the inputs and the results. We denote a scored goal by 1 and a missed one by 0. At first, all weights are initialized randomly and the bias is set to 0. Then we present our training examples to the neuron one by one, each time making a small adjustment to the parameters. For example, if the kicker managed to score a goal, but our neuron thinks that a goal is unlikely, then we need to update the parameters to reduce the error. But exactly by how much should we update each parameter? Intuitively, it makes sense to make updates proportional to the neuron's error. But if you take a close look at our formula, you'll notice that not each weight contributes equally to the error. Each weight w is multiplied by an x, which acts as an amplifier for the impact of w. And hence, updates to each weight should also be proportional to x. We can summarize the update rules like this. What's left is to repeatedly apply them to each of our training examples. Once the updates have converged, we'll have optimal values for weights and biases. Now we can use these learned parameters to make predictions on future results. This concludes our introduction to training neurons. But I have to mention that this video was meant to give the intuition behind neurons, and I often sacrifice scientific rigor for the sake of clarity. If you are curious to learn more, I compiled a list of resources in the description.